Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, we're going to start uh, the next session of um, the Artist Talks by the Eyes. Uh, so I will be, over the next hour, I'll be um, speaking with uh, three, well actually with um, four artists. Um, first of all, I'll be speaking with Hannah Whitaker about uh, her latest book, Ursula. After that, I'll be speaking with uh, Tobias Zoloni about his, um, his, latest, uh, his latest book, The Fall. And finally, at um, 3.30, I'll be speaking with Paolo Woods and Arnaud Robert about their book, um, Happy Pills. Um, so thank you all for being with us. So just to, uh, to start off the talk, uh, welcome, Hannah, first of all. Um, I just introduce you briefly, Hannah, um, and then we can begin to, to discuss this, this intriguing new project. So um, Hannah's an artist based in Brooklyn in New York, and um, you're, uh, you're really known, I guess, for your really vibrant kind of graphic compositions, um, images that are, that are really hard to read, that are like puzzles of a sort. Um, and also for the theme of the representation of the, of the female body as, as something that has um, been a, an important theme in your work. Um, in addition to the book, you're, you're showing this work on uh, the booth of uh, Galerie Christophe Gaillard, and you also have a show of the work at the gallery itself in the Marais. Um, so you'll be able to, uh, to see uh, prints of the work as well and some other um, other elements that uh, we were just discussing before. Um, but I guess just to, to start discussing this project, um, as I had mentioned before, you, you have developed over a really long period of time this quite uh, complex and approach to making images, um, you know, involving a four by five camera, uh, masks, multiple exposures, a kind of like analog equivalent of the, the digital layering that, that you know, many of us have become familiar with in Photoshop. But as I understand it, this project is a bit of a departure from that method. So can you tell us a bit about how you, you took this new approach and, uh, to making these images? Sure, happy to. And thank you for that introduction. Um, thank you for coming, everyone. Um, yes, yeah, so you're correct that for the past several years my work has consisted mostly of um, shooting with a large format film camera um, onto 4x5 film and I make images that look very much like collages but they are not collages, they are uh, totally optically made, they're photographs in a really strict sense. Um, but I use um, a masking technique that allows me to expose only a part of the film at once. Um, and I, I use a kind of reduced visual language repeatedly that involves silhouetted bodies and uh, graphic forms and metal grates and blinds and various, I use various objects that allow me to photograph um, different kinds of repeating patterns. Um, and you are correct that that is not what this book is <laughs> at all. Uh, this book contains um, regular, conventional, normal photographs. <laughs> which um, you know, is, a, I guess, a normal thing for other people, but in the, in the course of my trajectory, it is an abnormal thing for me. Um, and one, there were a few things that led me to this uh, departure. Um, one is that for, um, for most of my career as an artist, I also um, have had a parallel career shooting editorial and commercial work, so shooting photographs for magazines um, and commercial clients. Um, that's something that I've done for many years. And so I've kind of, uh, I shoot a lot of still life um, for those people and I've kind of um, got really interested in various uh, lighting techniques and set design, uh, set um, de installation techniques. Um, and so I made a decision uh, a year or two ago to start this project where I use a lot of the skills, a lot of the technical skills that I've amassed um, in that capacity, shooting editorial and commercial work uh, for the service of my artwork. So a lot of the ideas in terms of um, 
it, thinking about how women's bodies are depicted in the popular imagination and thinking about uh, the role of automation and uh, computing in our lives. Um, a lot of those uh, ideas have continued from one process to the next. Um, but you are very correct that the um, execution of these images has been a real departure. I mean, I think in a way it's funny that you refer to these as regular photographs, but I think to most of us they're pretty far removed from what we would consider to be a regular photograph. But obviously in the context of your practice, um, that is the case. Maybe just to, to, um, to develop a bit the, the, the thematic uh, nature of the project that you were just talking about, can you tell us about Ursula? Um, you know, is there an Ursula? Uh, and is she related to Siri and Alexa? <laughs> They're all sisters. No. <laughs> um, yeah, so the title of the book is Ursula. Ursula, a lot of people have asked me if Ursula is the woman in, in all of the photographs. Um, that She is not. Uh, it is the same woman uh, depicted in all of the images, but Ursula is a fictional character. Um, that I think of her as somebody kind of in the popular imagination, someone, a, a kind of archetype that we're probably all familiar with to varying degrees, who has, um, uh, who has appeared in uh, a lot of science fiction, movies, books, and things like that. And also, I think um, this figure relates strongly to um, a kind of personification of technology, a sort of persistent per personification of technology that, that we're seeing more and more. Um, so, yes, I, I am thinking specifically of uh, entities like Siri and Alexa and the way that when technology is personified, when it is, when it is designed to resemble human beings um, and it borrows aspects from our own physical bodies, like our voices, um, those uh, depictions are overwhelmingly um, female. Um, and so, yes, I was thinking about a lot of those kind of figures in, in thinking about who this persona is. Um, and I, I set her in a universe, in a kind of fantastical universe, a very colorful universe, full of patterns and light gradients and um, kind of lovely, colorful clouds. Um, and a lot of those worlds are kind of drawn from... Uh, or, or are meant to, dip, to create a picture of where this person is living and what her world is. Yeah, and I, I find it, it's quite interesting. I find it's quite difficult to, there's a kind of um, back and forth between a sense of futurism and kind of retro um, nostalgia. It's difficult to kind of situate, it feels, I guess, retro futurist might be a way of describing that, that world that you've created. Um, I understand that the, the model that appears in all the images is, is the same person and a, a, almost a lifelong friend of yours. So why, um, is there any particular reason why you decided to, to work with just that one person for the whole book and, and with her in particular? Well, I just love to photograph her. Um, there's something about her, her physicality that is really interesting to me and um, I think uh, one aspect of this figure who I'm, who I'm trying to access or trying to describe is this, this person is a kind of idealized version of a, of a human woman. Um, and so, and, and I think that that kind of idealized version of a person, um, you know, it, who is obviously totally unattainable, it exists in the way that technology is personified, but it also very certainly exists in the history of photography. Um, because, of course, the woman is the traditional subject for uh, within the history of photography um, and within the images that we see kind of in the broader culture at large. Um, and so a, a large part of this project for me is kind of investigating the relationship between um, how women have been depicted traditionally um, in a kind of broad sense and the way that uh, technology kind of uh, borrows from and informs that, de that depiction. And my, my last question, um, the, we, we spoke about this um, before at, at your opening, but um, I know that text plays an important part in this book. Um, the book's published by Image Text Ithaca Press, and, and you told me that you know, you, that was very much a conscious decision of working with them because of... Um, of you know the the importance that they give to text in their publications, so 
the book actually almost opens um, with uh, a, a piece of fiction, which, you know, in a way is quite unusual often for a, a book of photographs, and um, and also closes with a with another text written by an art critic. Um, uh, whose names I forget, but yeah. So Dawn Chan, the art critic, and 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 David Levine, who wrote the piece of fiction. So can you can you talk a little bit about about these texts and you know how how they came about? Were they in, involved in conversations with you in developing the text that they wrote, or are they things that you kind of just asked and 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 then re received without your own input? Just talk a little bit about the the, the process of of uh, these texts being written for the book. Yeah, um, both texts were written specifically for the books, uh, for the book. Um, and one reason I was so excited that Image Text Ithaca uh, wanted to publish this book is, um, you know, the, the photographs do look dangerously like fashion. <laughs> and so I was very excited to work with them um, in terms of uh, being able to establish a kind of intellectual context for these images. Um, and so when we approached uh, David and Don about writing texts for, for, this, for this project, um, for me, I, I saw each of them as contributing in very different ways to this project. Um, one thing that these photographs do uh, for me, or, or, or in, at least in terms of what I intend them to do, is I intend for them to be seductive images. Um, while also sort of being critical about the world. Um, and so that, that kind of... Um, duality I really wanted to be represented in the text. So David, um, both John and David are friends of mine. I like to collaborate with my friends. Um, and David is a really interesting artist and also a writer. And he is also, um, in terms of his own work, very interested in the power of an image to seduce. Um, and so I really wanted him to write, he, he wrote some fictional monologues um, that, that comprised the first text that you encounter in the book. And I really wanted him to write a piece that um, kind of drinks the Kool-Aid, that allows oneself to be seduced by these images, that allows one to be kind of taken in and um, in a kind of base way. Um, and Don is a, a brilliant, brilliant writer and a longtime friend of mine. And um, she is much more of a kind of uh, critical academic uh, writer. And she wrote a piece, uh, she's written a lot about the, um, the relationship between identity and technology, specifically with regard to race. Um, and so I proposed that she write something along those lines, um, but more related to gender and technology. Um, so she wrote, um, more of a kind of traditional essay um, for the book. Terrific. Um, do we have any questions from the audience for Hannah Whitaker? I've yet to have any questions from the audience today. Thank you. Hello? Oh, it's working. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand the backgrounds. If you could tell more about the backgrounds and the meaning behind them. Maybe you already said, but I just sort of focus on the, this one thing in specific, apart from the subject. I could barely hear that, but I think you were asking about the backgrounds? Yes, if okay. you could um, maybe just explain a little bit more about them. So um, I guess I'll, I'll just answer that question by starting by saying that uh, these photographs are not um, photoshopped, really. Um, what you see I made in, in my studio using sets. Um, and so, for example, that background is a printed backdrop that's lit with a blue light. Um, a lot of the backgrounds that you see are printed backdrops, like the clouds and things. And then the, the repeating patterns that you see are made from usually metal grates. Um, and then you'll also see stripes. Those are kind of regular household blinds. Um, so one thing that I really love to do in my work is use uh, just really mundane kind of silly materials and attempt to make them kind of transcend themselves and to turn them into something that can really participate in, in world building. Um, and so the backgrounds are me kind of attempting to re... In, 
uh, to in imbue these regular objects with a kind of new life and a kind of special visual quality. Okay, um, thank you so much, Hannah. And uh, for for those people that are interested in seeing the book, is there somewhere that the, is is the book available on um, the stand of Galerie Christophe Gaillard? Oh yes, also um, the book is available at the stand of Galerie Christophe Gaillard, which is which is stand um, F seven. And also, I should mention we're doing a signing there after the talk at four o'clock. Okay, so you'll be able to, uh, to spend more time with the book there and to, to ask uh, Hannah some further questions. So thanks very much, Hannah. Thank you so much, Mark. <laughs>